Hello everyone and welcome. Today, I'm going to show you a very cool thing called Gradio and you can create your own chatbot with it. So basically, Gradio was created by Hugging Face and they use it on their Hugging Face site where you do your interactive demos. It's basically a UI where you can interact with. So without further ado, let's just go and take a look at how we can use it. So I adapted this from the deep learning course by Andrew Ng and Hugging Face. It's called the um, Gradio with LMs course. All right. So the link is here if you are interested. So first up, we load our OpenAI key over here. Okay, you can just put it in. My key is hidden here. <laughs> then what I do is I create a simple chat function where I just call chat GPT with a system prompt and a user prompt. So the system prompt is something more of the, the higher level stuff that conditions how the large language model generates. And the user prompt can be something like the text that you want the LM to generate based on. All right. So just to give you an example, the system prompt here is like classify whether the number is even or odd and the user prompt can be four. So the LM will base on four and give you answer. So of course we can use the strict JSON framework to make this a JSON output. But given that this is a chat bot, I've decided not to do it. We will just use the chat GPT output as is. All right, so these are some imports that we make. First up, we just do a normal chat. All right, this chat basically, this is the main magic okay, of Gradio. You basically have this chat bot component that it can alternate between the, the chat bot AI and the user, AI user, and so on. And basically, we have a a text box here that you can submit the next message you want to type to the chatbot and then you have a button to submit you have a clear that clears in all the previous messages as well as um yeah basically after you click on that all your previous messages will be gone um you can also click on a button over here and the button will call in this function respond all right with the input message okay and the output will also be a message same thing when you submit your message is the same thing. So you can either click enter or you can click on the button. All right, sorry, press enter or click on the button. So here, what does respond do? Respond will simply just do a random choice between these three outputs. All right, so later on, we will adapt this to put the large language model there. But for now, let's just use this. So you can see, hi, how are you? You can see that, hmm, okay then. What do you mean? So over here, this does not have any memory or any history. This just basically just takes in the prompt and then just randomizes this tree over here, all right? So now let's add in the chatbot, all right? So we have in the respond function, so everything down here is the same, all right? Only on this uh, respond function here, okay, we have adapted it such that we have a formatted prompt now. And what does this formatted prompt do? This formatted prompt basically takes in the last few um conversations so over here i set it to 10 all right you can change this uh, however you want so basically the last 10 user assistant messages will be based as context and the current user message will be given here and the lm will be prompted to give the assistant message so the system problem is very simple you are a friendly chatbot generate the output only for the assistant because we don't want it to generate the user as well yeah so let's see how this works so let's run this, okay? And we can see that, like we can ask it a few questions. What is five plus five maybe? So you see the five plus five is 10. Okay, so you can see over here, I have printed prompt plus context. You can see what is the prompt and context given to ChatGPT. So this is the entire context. What is five plus five? Question mark, assistant. All right, of course, before that, we also have the system prompt, all right? So you can ask it like, Give me the number divided by two. Okay, I mean, it's not very good at math, but I mean, I'm just going to show you that this is based on the history. And this is like the prompt here. The prompt will give you all the past 10 user assistant interactions. So this is a kind of memory. Okay, we can even ask it like summarize the conversation so far. And then it will just based on the conversation and so far, we have determined this. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. You can do this further. So this simulates, like, if you were to use OpenAI, this simulates the web browser interface where you can ask messages and so on. So this is the entire history. Of course, we can do more complicated stuff, like you can have a summarized history that, that gives you the summarized version all the time as context. 
and that will be updated every single prompt. And you can also have a long-term memory, okay, similar to what Symbolic AI did. Okay, a long-term memory whereby you save all these user assistant messages as an index in a database, and then you do some form of retrieval. So using cosine similarity or something, you can retrieve the most relevant messages as long-term memory to condition on it. So I did not do all this. I just made a very simple one. All right, so I my friend Sky, um, who recently, I, he has published this paper on this antibiotics. You can see the paper here. So I wanted to do something to like ask the document. All right, so as a very simple use case, I just copy and paste the, the, the brief summary of this over here. So this is the context given over here. So what I want to do now is I want to make the chatbot only answer stuff based on the context. So I changed the system from a bit. So answer based on the context. If unsure, output, I don't know. And this is the context over here. So let's see how this looks like. Okay, so just to show you, we can also click on this link here. And this will output the chatbot over here. So we can see over here that like we can ask it like what is C plus C. So maybe let's do it. And then you can see that C plus C is the combination of ciprofloxacin and cotrimozazo. So that's over here. All right. So I'm going to ask it a question that it probably doesn't know. So maybe I ask it like, what is D plus D? Because I, I don't think there's a D plus D. No, that's not mentioned. So maybe I can ask it like, what is the weather? What is the time now? That because something that it does not know. But of course, if you have like two integration, we can also do like, uh, maybe I can do another video on that. Like you can basically ask like what tool should you use based on the user prompt, go to that tool, use it and retrieve back and so on. Okay. So I'm going to just like ask it another question, like um, perhaps over here, like how many, how many UTIs were diagnosed clinically? Let's ask it. What proportion of UTIs were diagnosed clinically? So over here, it should be about 26%. So that's correct. So maybe we can ask it something that it does not know. Maybe just ask it something else, like what proportion of UTIs are correlated with patients with heart attack. I guess the paper did not talk about heart attack at all. We can see. So that's right. So by just, I didn't do anything much. I just basically changed this prompt here to just say the answer based on context. And it's generally quite a good discerner of whether or not a certain question fits in the context or not. All right. And all this still has history. You can even say summarize the entire conversation so far. And you can see what, what it has. And yeah, uh, let's just take a look at the output for this. So we discussed the, the UTIs. Okay, I, I did not discuss with it that. I mean, it just assumed that uh, because since I'm talking about C plus C, it talks about higher resistance rates. Okay, so. All right, so what it did, it actually summarized the, the study. All right, so maybe we can ask it to summarize the conversation um between the user and assistant. I, I wonder if this can do the job because just now what it did was that it summarized the paper. So let's see the user asked, ah there we go, the user. So this part here, somehow it seemed to think that context is the conversation. So I guess that could be edited so far. Like this context here, it seems to think that this is the conversation that a user and the assistant had. So yeah, that could be better prompted, I guess. Yeah, but you can see that this is like what we asked, like you asked about time, couldn't provide. So you can see that from this conversation, there is indeed some memory that is stored. And this memory is just done using this. You can see that this is like what the GPT input is given, just like this user assistant, user assistant. And yeah, until OpenAI comes up with some like um, stateful kind of API call. If not, this is like more or less the best bet that we have so far. And of course, if you can integrate tools, you can integrate retrieval or method generation, your chatbot can do way more. But I'm just showing you basically how you can use Gradio. All right. And in fact, you can even set share equals to true over here. Like over here, if you put share equals to true, 
let me just show you as a, a as a, a last bit. If you put share equals to true in your demo.launch, you can run this notebook in your cloud service or in the computer that you want to keep running. Okay, over here, it expires in 72 hours. You can um, basically upgrade it for more permanent hosting. All right. But you can click on this public URL. In fact, you can just pass this URL to your friends and they can play the chatbot like, what is um the summary or what is the key finding of the paper? You can, I mean, since this is about asking the paper, which is the paper on UTI. Yep. So the paper is that treatment failure rates were lower for antibiotics. So people can play around with this. I think this will be a useful tool. I mean, especially if you are doing some form of like asking documents and so on. You can load your document and then you can ask the documents over here. Of course, if you want to load the documents, we have to change the gradual bit to have a loading menu, but that, that can be easily done. All right. If not, uh, that's all for today's uh, tutorial. Hope it was useful. And I'll be linking this notebook as well so you can try it out. I really like gradual a lot because it's like essentially a chatbot created for you with just a few lines. Look at how few lines there is. It's just like that gr.chatbot and then you just copy and paste these few lines you can go to the gradual website you can see over here i'm creating a chatbot gradual in fact over here they already have some stuff that you can do all right and you can even do this thing called streaming where you can like make the messages go out like like not the whole chunk but you can stream it out a little bit i, I didn't put this feature because it's, it, it lacks a bit yeah, but if you want, you can do stuff like streaming as well. So it's really very, very easy, easily customizable. You can put whatever buttons you want. You can just customize what functions the button does. It can just integrate back end with your own chatbot. Like it need not even be ChatGPT. Because this chatbot here, you can just put like maybe Llama 2. You can just put your own function here. So very useful. And yeah, hopefully this helps you. Okay, and signing out now. Bye, Brent.